Hi, my name is Ant, and I will be explaining the Sysmodel Labs process on how to extract hydrodynamic parameters using Nemo. In this video, we'll begin in a CAD program. We'll specifically be using Fusion 360. However, any CAD program that can export a .stl file should work. We'll go over creating the model and the mesh in such a way that Nemo will be able to process it. Then we will export that as a .stl file. We will use BEM Rosetta to convert it into a Nemo.dat file. We will then create the input files that Nemo needs in addition to the .dat file. We will run it in the MATLAB wrapper, and then we will visualize the output data using BEM Rosetta. We'll begin by opening Fusion 360. I've already created a cube right on the origin. It's one meter by one meter by one meter. One of the necessities when designing an object for use in Nemo is that everything above the z equals zero axis, which Nemo considers to be the water line, needs to be cut off. Nemo doesn't even want to think about anything that's not under the water. So, I'm going to do exactly that. And it also doesn't want things to be directly on the z equals zero axis. It doesn't want any of the uh, mesh panels to be facing into the z equals zero axis, into the plane. Uh, you'll see what that means in a little bit. But now I'm going to select my object, unstitch all the pieces apart. I can just select the top by itself and delete it. And then I'll stitch all the pieces back together. Now that our object has been selected to be only those parts which will be directly interacting with the water, we can export it as a .stl. Do this, I'm going to select the body and save it as a mesh. I'll turn the preview on, hopefully so that you can see it. There we go. Hmm. There is an art to selecting the number of panels in your mesh. Uh, Nemo can handle up to, I think, 3,000 panels, perhaps, but most objects really shouldn't be any more than 1,000. You're probably looking at something between 500 to 1,000 for a normal object uh, that you're going to run through these kinds of simulations. However, our cube here is very simple, so I doubt it will get that high. I'm going to decide that these look about right. I'm hit OK. And I'm going to save this as cube number seven. You can see that I've run a few of these. All right. And here is where things get a little bit tricky, because Nemo cannot accept .stl files. It, it's not designed to take them in. It's designed to take in a very specific Nemo.dat file format type, which most CAD programs, certainly not Fusion 360, they can't produce it. However, there is another program called BEM Rosetta. BEM Rosetta's whole deal is translating between different languages of wave energy conversion design. So it can translate uh, WAMIT data into NEMO data, into AQUA data, and very importantly, it can translate .stl files into NEMO.dat files, which we can do right here. Cube number seven. All right, you can see our cube has been brought into BEM Rosetta, and it actually visually displays it for us. We can select to see the water line, which is where we expect it to be, and we can select the normals, 
These arrows describe which directions the mesh panels are facing, as I mentioned earlier. NEMA wants none of them to be pointing into the Z plane, uh, but it does want all of them to be facing outside of the body, which, as we can verify here, they do. This just determines for NEMA which side of the body the water is on. It even allows us to process this a little bit. We can go into, let's see, we'll show the mesh data. So this shows all of the panels. So counts through them all, as well as all of the nodes. So I'm not sure if you can see the little dot moving around, but it's counting all of the points between the panels. What we can do is go into the processing tab and hit simplify. What just happened is it removed excess nodes. So when the uh, CAD program was creating the mesh, uh, it has to create each panel individually. So a lot of these nodes get replicated. By hitting simplify, Bam Rosetta gets rid of those nodal replications. This might make it easier for the computer to run calculations later on. It also cuts down on file sizes, especially for large meshes. Then we can enter our Save As tab. Uh, you can see you can save it as a WAMIT type file and as a Nemo.dat. However, we have to have a place to save it, which is what we'll discuss next. This is the main folder where I keep the downloaded Nemo executable files, as well as the id.dat file, which we'll come back to later, and all of the model files. I'm going to begin by creating a new cube7 model file. Inside of that, we'll create two folders, mesh, And results. Results we leave empty because Nemo is going to fill it in later. Within mesh, we're going to save the Nemo.dat. You can see it's already been set up to save it as cube7 within the cube7 folder. Just hit convert, and now we should see yes, we've saved it to the right place. If we open that up in Notepad++, we can see a section detailing the number of points, as well as a section detailing the connections between the panels. The third thing that we need in our cube 7 model file, besides mesh and results, is the nemo.cal file, which I'll just copy over from another project, just to save time. Opening this up in Notepad++, we can see it gives us some environment data, uh, the number of frequencies that we're going to be running this simulation over. But what we need to specify is the directory, so we need to point to cube7, as well as specify the number of points and the number of panels, which we can get from the .dat file. You can see that here they're numbered so that there are 33 points, enter that, and to get the number of panels, I'm going to take 83, forget the zeros, they don't mean anything, they're just breaks between the sections, I'm going to take 83 and subtract 35 to get 48 panels. Save that. Moving back up, the last thing that we need to specify before actually running Nemo is the id.dat file. As you can see, we just need to enter the name of the model file and the number of characters in that name. Nemo knows to look for the id.dat, it's hard-coded in, and then the id.dat directs it towards the right location. 
Now we're ready. Nemo comes with a MATLAB wrapper to make it easier to function. There is also the possibility of running Nemo in the terminal, and there are some niche cases where that might be better than the MATLAB. However, I'll discuss that in another video. For now, in the base case, this is the most simple Nemo script that you would need to write in order to run Nemo. So you have the actual Nemo function, which requires the frequency, which I specify here, uh, range from 0.1 to 16, with 50 points in between. Uh, it also needs to know the direction, which is you know, the angle at which the wave is incoming, as well as the depth of the sea floor. If you list the direction as zero, it just thinks that the wave is coming head on, and if you list the depth as zero, it assumes that the sea floor is infinitely deep and will not be affecting the calculations. We can now hit run. It'll solve our problems. And if we close this and we open up our results folder, we have our hydrodynamic parameters. However, these can be a little difficult to read. That's not very intuitive at first glance. However, Bemrosetta once again comes to our aid because if we go into the hydrodynamic coefficients tab, we can tell it to open up the .cal file and it will read it and graphically visualize the data. Right now we're in the force of excitation, but we can also see the radiation damping, added mass, etc. And we can also, if we go into viewing the data, save this as a .csv, which makes it easier to work with than just the uh, text files that Nemo outputs by default. And that is how you extract the hydrodynamic parameters of any three-dimensional model that you care to design. Thank you, and have a good day.